Now down below in the command history um, is literally what it sounds like. This is the history of everything I've typed in. It doesn't give you the answers here. It just tells me what I've done. So it's great because as you start typing lots and lots of things here, you know, 100 plus A, you start getting, you scroll, start scrolling off the screen. I mean, you can scroll back up, but this is a nice, concise history of everything I've done. So I can look back in here, I, I can say, okay, September 20th, 2011 at eight o'clock in the morning, I type these things in. Now, if you want to reproduce a calculation, you can highlight, you can actually double click any of these things here, and it will go into uh, it will go into the command window and it'll be executed and now we're back to the, the answer being negative 81. If I want to reproduce this calculation 100 plus 8 I can double click it and then it'll go into the command window and our last answer will be again updated with a value of 108. So it, you know if you're doing homework this is great because you could do a complicated calculus problem get the answer and then you could shut MATLAB down open it up. This command history is always going to be here. In fact this command history it never it eventually it'll start to overwrite itself but it'll go many 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 hundreds maybe even thousands of, of entries before anything ever gets deleted in here um, and in fact if I start to use MATLAB tomorrow it'll put another percent it'll say 920 or it'll say 921 at whatever time and then I'll have a history of tomorrow uh, here as well so I guess what I'm trying to say is if you use MATLAB for a, a couple of days and you look in the command history, you'll see what I was doing today, you'll see what I was doing yesterday, you'll see what I was doing the day before, all labeled nicely. All right. Now if you ever want to erase the command history, maybe you're just playing around, you can just right click on this guy, that's a right click, clear command history. It'll ask you if I'm sure, I hit yes, command history is empty. Now this doesn't change what I have in the command window here, this just changes the history of what I, what I have. Of course if I start typing more stuff, then command history continues to get populated. All right, so this here again is the command window where I type in everything. These are the variables and what you know what 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 the values are here. And this is a history of everything I've done. Let me show you at this point one of the most uh, common commands that you are going to use, and that is CLC. CLC basically means clear the command window. CLC, clear the command window. So hit CLC and that basically erases the command window and puts your prompt at the top. A lot of times you play around doing calculations then you want to wipe it out. Of course, notice I still have my history down here to reproduce anything that I'd like. So in including the CLC that I typed. So if I said, oh my goodness, I didn't want to clear that. I want to do one plus one again. I can just double click that and, and there you go. So you never really lose anything even by doing this CLC. All right. Now, the other thing I want to show you before I go and teach you a little bit about the other windows is a little bit more about the command space. So right now the last answer is 2 because I did 1 plus 1. Let me quickly show you. We're going to talk a lot more about this in, in a couple of sections, but I'll just show you. I can, I can uh, store variables here. I can say a is equal to 3. This is a variable a equal to 3. So it responds with, okay, thank you for typing that in, a is equal to 3. And at the same time, the workspace window is updated to show me that variable a is now equal to 3. Variable b is equal to 15. I can just type it in like that, hit enter, it responds with b is equal to 15, and it updates it over here in the workspace window. All right, now if I just want to type in a plus b, See, MATLAB knows that A is equal to 3 and B is equal to 15, so when I type in A plus B, it responds with an answer of 18, and it updates the last answer of 18 uh, over here. So I guess what I'm trying to, to let you know is, is what's going on here is whatever variables you define are going to be reflected over here with their current values. So later on when we, when we start... Um, uh, when we start introducing different types of variables like matrix variables like vectors and things like that you'll be able to look over here and see what the values are and of course the last answer of whatever calculation that you have there's more options up here you know we'll, we'll talk about that because this is a little more powerful I can actually create variables in this panel I can create matrices over here with like a little spreadsheet editor we'll get into all that stuff later the most important thing is for you to just know that this reflects whatever variables you have and if I clear the screen CLC right you remember that command CLC all that does is wipe out the command window here it doesn't change any variables I still know if I type in a and hit enter 
MATLAB still knows that A is equal to 3. It still knows that B is equal to 15 because I haven't cleared that. I haven't actually wiped out any variables. All I'm doing with CLC is just clearing the screen. The variables are still present. Okay. Now, let me turn your attention to the left-hand side of the screen. The left-hand side of the screen is, is a place where it's almost like a... A, a, a browser for the MATLAB files on your computer. Notice at the top of the screen it says current folder C colon users JSON documents MATLAB. This is kind of like the working directory. What you need to do is pick one place on your computer where you want MATLAB to live and work um, with your documents and this is the folder that you that you have up here. Now whatever I've selected up here notice I also have the full this is the full path over here um, users JSON's documents MATLAB um, this is the current folder that whatever I've selected up here is also what's selected here. And of course there's nothing here because I've just fired up MATLAB, I've just installed it, and I don't have a lot of, of, um, of, of .m files, which are the MATLAB files listed here. But when I create my MATLAB files, they're going to automatically be listed here. I'll be able to select them, um, select them and look at them and open them and so on. So, and I'll show you how to do that here in just a second. So this main window is where you're mostly going to live and work in MATLAB. Uh, and you enter your calculations to get your answers. Now there's a couple other parts of the user, user interface that I really want to point out to you. First of all, I want to show you the plot window because you're going to use a lot of, spend a lot of your time in the plot window. So in order to pull up a very simple plot, let me define something for you. And we'll talk about all this stuff later, so don't worry about it right now. But I'm going to say that the variable x is equal to 0 colon 0 0.1 colon 10 with an end bracket here. Um, well, again, we'll talk about all this later. All this is saying is uh, x is equal to a range of values, 0 to 10, in increments of 0 0.1. That's all it is. The semicolon at the end tells MATLAB to not to echo the the value of x back to the screen because it'll just take up a lot of space. So I'm storing all these values in, in x and now I'm going to plot. I'm going to open up a parentheses and I'm going to plot x comma sine. Notice it's trying to help me here with my function sine of x and I'm going to shut it down like that. So what you're doing is you're plotting x, y values here. I'm plotting the values of x which I've just defined here along with the corresponding values of sine of x. So I'm plotting x, y values. So when I hit enter, then it's going to do that. It's going to do that plot. It's going to pull, pull up a plot window. And I just, I'm not trying to get into any kind of detail here. I'm just showing you that this is a plot window. And this is a sine wave, so you should all recognize that. It's literally plotting the values of x against sine of x, and it plots each point individually, uh, and so on. And if you notice over here in my variable window, it also popped up with the variable x and instead of a single instead of a single number here because this is a range of numbers that I've defined it tells me that I have lots of values here and if I scroll over to the right it tells me I have a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 10 and that's just because of the way um, that's just because of the fact that this is a range of values from 0 to 10 now when I clicked over there uh, then my figure my uh, plot window dropped to the background so I'm just going to go to the taskbar down here and select figure number one and bring it back. So this is a uh, this is a plot window here, much like you might see in a graphing calculator. Now you have zoom buttons here, so I can go over here and I can click and zoom in on this graph and see what it really looks like. And I can hit the minus sign and I can zoom out. Okay, but also a nice feature is if you click here, this is like a trace function in a graphing calculator. I can hit this data cursor, so to speak, and click it on the graph anywhere I'd like, and then it tells me that at a value of x is equal to 2.5, the y value is 0.59. And of course I can click anywhere I want, but I can also use the arrow keys. Now I'm just using the right hand arrow key, I'm just pressing it on my keyboard and I'm kind of tracing through this graph. Now I can hold it down and do something like that, go back and forth. So it functions much like a graphing calculator, which is, which is really nice because it's pretty interactive. Uh, here. Now there's a ton of things you can do. You can save these figures here uh, to your hard drive for future use. You can label them of course. You can put nice XY labels and titles and legends and you can do colorful graphs and diff change the thickness of the graph and when you're doing more complicated graphs like three-dimensional graphs you can do tons of things there. So there's a lot of capability in the graphing features of MATLAB and we're going to get into all of it later but I just wanted to introduce what the what, what this was all about. So let me go ahead and just shut this down for right now and we'll go back to our command window.